I'm going to show you how to make a hangman app, and uh, what I've done is I have this single view app project in Xcode 11. I have connected um, a label at the top, I called that uh, display world label. I've connected another label, I called that the wrong letters label. <laughs> I connected a uh, text field, I called it guess text field, it's where the user is going to guess uh, to see uh, if their letter is in the word. I have two buttons, I have guess and reset button. Um, and then I connected two images. In this first image, this game image, uh, I called it game image. I'm going to show like a game over or a you win image um, to let the user know if they won or if they lost. And then this other image down here called the hangman image, that's where I'm going to draw um, the person hanging. I, I think everybody's familiar with hangman. You have a word, you guess the letters. Uh, if you don't guess it, then there's a picture of somebody hanging. It's a little bit morbid, but uh, that's the game. Yeah, anyway, uh, let me, so that's that's what my um, main dot storyboard looks like. Uh, that's how I set it up. And I'm including a um, starter file in the assets folder. If you want to use that, if you want to download that, you can start with the same way that I'm set up. Otherwise, if you know how to add these um, labels and buttons and images from the object library, uh, go ahead and add them yourself and you can connect them with control, click and drag. I always connect my outlets up above view did load and then my um, buttons, my guest button and my reset button I put below view did load. You'll notice I've made a lot of comments um, in this just to let you know um, what the different variables are for and where I'm going to do different actions and I think I'll get more into that. So let me close this uh, main.storyboard. So now right now we're in the um, view controller.swift file and here I have created an array of three different words. Of course, if this was a final project, you'd probably have a lot more words. Uh, <laughs> with only three words, this Hangman game will be a little bit boring. But just to show you how it works, I'm just having these three words right now. I have the next variable. It's going to be called word. And that's going to be, I'm just going to pick one of these words from the array, and I'm going to assign it to this variable right here. Um, I haven't done it yet because I want it to be randomized. And I'll do it inside of uh, view did load. Uh, the next variable I have is wrong letters array. It's going to be an array of characters. So when the user guesses, if they get the guess incorrect, I'm just going to append this array with that character. Um, so this will just be a, a list of all the wrong letters. And uh, if you remember the label up here, this wrong letters li wrong letters label, I'm just going to put those letters. I'm just going to put those. I'm going to put this array, um, I'm going to print it out, I'm going to show it here in this label, the wrong letters label. Okay, anyway, let's keep going. Um, I have a display word array, um, and it's an array, oh, used letters, let me get to this one, used letters, this is all the letters that are used in the word. So if it was rhythm, it would be R-H-Y-T-H-M, and that, that would be the array uh, stored in used letters. And then I have a display word array, and this is another array of characters, and I'm going to tell you it's different than the used letters array, because this one's going to be a mix. I'm going to start off, this one's going to start off with all question marks. So when the user opens the game, all they see is question marks, and then they'll make a guess and it'll fill in. Um, so it'll be a mix of question marks and letters, and that's why it's different than the used letters one. Uh, this string um, is called display word, and I'm going to use it to uh, display the word that the user has to guess. This one's called guess, so when the user guesses, it's going to be a character, and that guess is going to be stored in this variable called guess. Okay. So yeah, this is my first time making a hangman game, so I tried to make it as efficient as possible. I'm bet 
some of you guys can make it a little bit more efficient or you can cut down maybe on some of these variables. If you do, if you let me know in the comments how you're able to improve this app, I'd be really interested. Um, so feel free to leave a comment about that. Um, so why don't we just start inside of view did load. So we're gonna choose a word and assign it to the variable word. So when I'm assigning a value to a variable, I always start with where I want it to go and I want it to go into the word variable. So I start with word and then it's equal to word array dot random element. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn this word into an array and I'm gonna call that used letters. So if you remember up here, used letters is an array of characters. So now I have the word chosen and the word variable is gonna be in string format and I have used letters, which is gonna be in like an array of characters format. Next, I'm going to set display word to the right number of question marks and put into display word label. Oh, let me fix that spelling. So I'm gonna do this in a for loop. The way a for loop works is you say for, um, and then a variable. This is just, this variable, all this variable is gonna do is count. So I could call it i, I could call it um, x. Uh, you can call it anything you want. What it's gonna do is it's gonna start at number one, because I told it to start at number one, and it's gonna continue counting until it gets to word.count. Um, word.count is the length of my word. Remember, it's in string format. So uh, if my, uh, if the word chosen was rhythm, um, that's six letters. So the first time it's gonna go through, um, I is gonna equal, be equal to this one right here. Next time it goes through, it'll be equal to two, then three, then four. It's just counting and when it gets up to count, then it knows it, it can stop. So that's what this variable right here does in the for loop. And display word, I'm gonna do plus equals a question mark. So I'm going to add a question mark every time it goes through this for loop. So it should be a question mark for every letter in the word, um, just depending on how long the word is. So if it picked a different word like juice, there'd only be five question marks, or if it picked rhythm, there'd be six. Um, so that's the way that works. Um, then I'm gonna take my display word label dot text, and I'm gonna have it equals my display word, which I've just set as a series of question marks. Then I'm going to take my my display word that I just created with these question marks and I'm going to turn it into an array and that's going to be called display word array. Now I think there's more efficient ways to do this but I found it a little bit tricky working with characters and array so I've been making uh, a characters array and a string for for these. Like I said if you find a more efficient way please let me know. And that is what I'm going to do inside of view did load. All right, so now I'm in the guess button function. And when this button is pressed, the first thing I want to do is resign the first responder. What that means is um, when the user types into the text field, the first responder is going to be the software keyboard. And when the person hits this guess button, I want that software keyboard to disappear. So I called that text field um, guess guess text field. So what I'm going to type in here, I'm going to type in guess guess text field dot resign first responder, and that will make that software keyboard disappear. Next, I have to make sure the user hasn't entered. Um, the user has entered a letter, but not more than one letter. So I think I'm going to do uh, if, else if statement for this one. And I'm going to start off by creating a it's going to be a constant called guess1, and it's just going to be equal to what's in the 
guess text field. Alright, then I'm going to check that. So if that constant that I just created, guess one, is equal to blank, I think I'm gonna have the placeholder text tell the user to enter a enter a letter. So I'll start with where I want the information to appear, and I want that to appear in the guess text field. And I can just say dot placeholder text. probably help if I spelled enter correctly. Enter a letter. Um. So if guess one count is greater than one, so it's going to count the, the letters inside this constant guess one. If it's greater than one, I'm probably going to write inside the placeholder text again. I'm just going to say enter one letter. Next up, if they, so if it's not blank and if it's not more than one, then what we can do is we can go ahead and use that letter as the guess for the person. So this is where I'm going to assign the value to guess. Um, guess is going to be a character, but what the user has written in the text field, it comes out as a string. So what this means right here is text field dot text. I'm going to capitalize it. The reason why is if they put in a lowercase l, and I have this word here, lunatic, with an uppercase l, um, the it will be, it will be hard to check to see if they are the same. So instead of uh, checking a lowercase with an uppercase, I'm just gonna make all everything that the user enters. I'm just gonna make it capitalized so that it will be easier to check. Then I'm going to take that and I'm going to turn it into a character. Remember, it should be only one letter if our previous um, if and else if statement worked. And then we're just going to assign that to guess. And if you remember, we created that variable right up here. Variable guess, it's a character. So now we're assigning it. All right, next up, I have to call the check for letter function. So let's create that function. Um, I start off with the keyword func. And I'm just going to check and see if this guess that the user made is in the word or if it's not. Mm -hmm. um, so now that I have my function check for letter, I can call that function up here. I'm going to start with an if statement in check for letter. That if statement is going to be um, if use letters dot contains guess. So if you remember up inside of view did load, we created this array of used letters, and that array is um, from this word that we picked out of the random <laughs> out of the, the random word that we picked out of the array. And so if the guess is part of that, then we need to add those letters to the word. Um, else if their letter isn't uh, part of that then we're just gonna start 
drawn the hangman because they gate they guessed incorrectly so I'll put in some code here for the else if they guessed wrong what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the wrong letters array and I'm gonna append that with their guess um, to keep a list of all the incorrect letters and then I'm going to post that um, wrong letters array that I just appended I'm gonna convert it into a string um, typecast into a string and then I'm going to put it in the wrong letters label so I'm changing the wrong letters uh, label text and if they got it correct I'm gonna use a for loop to write in the correct letters where they should be in the word that we're displaying for them I think this So I want this I to start at zero, and I want it to go up to one less than the word count. The reason why is I'm going to use this I as the index number for the array, and arrays always start at zero. So that's why I'm doing this for loop starting at zero and going to one less, um, so word count minus one, uh, because I'm going to use this I to append the array to, to change um, the elements in the array so next in here I'm gonna put in a if statement and that's gonna say if guess is equal to used letters array index number I so remember this I is gonna count the first time it goes through it'll be equal to zero um, if guess is equal to the used letters um, in index i, then we want to put that letter, we want to put guess um, into, into. So this is where I'm going to take the display word array, and it's the same, the index number is going to be the same, and I'm just going to um, put guess in the place of that question mark in the display word array. The other thing I'm going to do if they get it wrong is I want to place an image. So I'm gonna write another function. That function is gonna be called place image. And then I'll just call the function here. Um, for my place image function, I'm going to create an array of the images um, inside of assets. Uh, these images you can create your own. Um, it's just like drawing a hangman. You can also use the images, these images that I provide in the assets folder. So I'm going to use pick one through eight, um, which is just uh, this person being hung. So the person's going to be able to guess eight wrong answers uh, before they lose and so what I've done is I've created a constant for each of those images p1 through p8 and I've assigned UI image named pick one pick two pick three um, to these different numbers and I put those um, p1 through p8 into an image array and the reason why I did that is it'll just be easier to um, set the image because now all I have to say is hangman image dot image is going to be equal to the image array um, wrong letters array dot count minus one. So if you think about the wrong letters array, there's going to be there's going to be a wrong letter for every wrong letter uh, guessed, and so we're going to count up all the letters. That are that are were wrong. The incorrect guesses. We're gonna minus one because the arrays always start on zero in the index number. So this is gonna be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's why we're gonna minus one, and then this is gonna assign the correct image. Okay, we finished our place image array, um, and we're gonna go back up to this guess button.
what we're going to do next is we're going to say display word which is a string variable um, is going to be equal to display word array we're going to convert this display word array into a string variable and then just put it in there um, remember we updated display word array inside of this if statement which is inside of the for loop which is checking to see if the letters guessed is correct um, so this will update um, in the label so let's update it in the label to update it in the label we're gonna say display word label dot text is equal to display word so display word is a string we just created and we're just putting it into that label to show the user next up we want to take guess text field dot text and we just want to set it to a blank string so when the user guesses we just erase that letter out of the text field and we'll either put it inside of the word or we'll put it um, inside the wrong letters guessed. Next up we want to check to see if we won. So I think I'm going to create a new variable for that after place image, or excuse me, new variable, new function for that, sorry. It's going to be um, check for win. function right up here. For the function check for win, we want to do an if statement. So we're going to say if the wrong letters array dot count is going to be equal to 8, the person's going to lose. So we're going to say game image dot image is equal to UI image. Named game over. Else, if the display word still contains question marks, then they haven't finished guessing all the letters. Else, it has no question marks and they haven't lost, then they won. So we're going to change the game image again. I'm just going to copy this, paste it down here, and change game over to you win. So inside the reset button, we want to reset all the variables, the labels, and the images. Uh, then we want to pick a new random word and display it in that label up top. So in case there's some tech, uh, placeholder text or something uh, inside of the text field, I'm just going to set it to blank. It should We already cleared it um, here, but maybe there's some placeholder text from one of these. So I'm just going to set it to a blank string. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the hangman image and set it to an image, UI image contents of file just empty. And this is going to make that image empty. I'm not sure if there's a better way to do this or not, um, but I found that this works, so this is what I'm using. I also have to do it not just to the hangman image, but to the game image as well, because I want both those images to be blank when the game starts. Next up, I'm going to reset the wrong letters array to be blank. I'm also going to set the wrong letters label to be blank as well. Um, I'm also going to set the display word um, to be empty again. Then I'm going to pick a new random word and we're going to display it in the label. So word is going to be equal to the word array dot random element. Um, because there's only three words in our array, you might end up getting the same word again. Then after we've gotten that word, we're going to set used letters array, or excuse me, yeah, the, the array of characters of used letters to be equal to 
an array of characters of that word. Next up, I'm going to do a for loop. Um, um, remember, this letters right here can be anything. It's just an a it's just a variable that's going to count. It's going to count from one to the end of the word. Um, while it's going through there, we're just going to be assigning question marks to each letter in the word, so we can display um, that in the label. So display word is a string and we're just saying this plus equal sign is just going to add a question mark onto that string every time it goes through the for loop. So it'll go through the for loop as long as the word is and each time it'll do a question mark. So that's how we're getting the right number of question marks um, for the word. Uh, next we're going to take that display word and we're going to put it in the display word label. So the display word label.txt is going to be equal to that display word. And then just we're going to take that display word and we're going to turn it into an array of characters. Um, so display word array is going to be equal to an array of display word. And what that should do is it should reset everything and it should pick a new word and, um, and show that new word up at the top. And that should get our reset button working. We can give it a try and make sure everything's working all right. When you're all done, you can test it out. It has a question mark for each um, word there. Excuse me, each letter. <laughs> Uh, so I know this word, but I'm going to try to get this one wrong. Uh, the word's lunatic, so I'm going to try to get guess some that are going to make me lose just so I can check to see if the game over works. Yep, yeah, and it does. You can The reset button seems to be working. Great, thanks for watching.